Hello there everyone and thank you for joining me here at the start of a new campaign in Old World Blues, our early access look at the 5.0 update Ashes to Embers in which we're play playing as a Baron's Irie. Now I've played them before but they had a generic focus tree but with the 5.0 update they have a last generic focus tree in which we have a little bit more options afterwards once we go to war with our northern neighbors but we gotta do Birth of a Baron. I almost said Birth of a Nation, that's an old movie. Every great land needs an equally great founding father. The founder of the Irie is a humble and bold man named Augustus. This is how the story began. Additionally, uh, if you'd like to check out Old World Blues for yourself, uh, it'll be the first link in the description below. And the update, the 5.0 update for Old World Blues will be released on February 28th, 2024 for everyone. But thank you once again to the devs for giving me early access to explore many of the nations up here in the north. And uh, yeah, to have fun. And the, the, develop, the developers have done a fantastic job um, with pretty much all the nations I've seen so far. So, most, some nations we can show you, us, you know, me and some of the other YouTubers, and some other things we can't show you. So they're doing a fantastic job and we love the developers very much. Thank you, developers. Also, as a warning, this is still early access, so there might be a few bugs and whatnot, but I have not encountered a single one yet, so they're fantastic. The developers are awesome. But Zach arrives. Travelers from the west, exhausted and hungry, came to the Eyrie and then to Augustus's door. They were exiled warriors in search of a home, and they found themselves more than welcome, but both of a baron. When the sky fell and the world shattered under the impact, all the lands fell into, into barbarism and chaos. The land now known as Eyrie was no different, scarred and haunted by monsters, radiation, and bands of roving raiders. Not all was lost, or hopeless, however, and there were always those who stood against the dark. Settlers, ranchers, and hunters all banded together for survival in these dark times. Over the many decades, those communities grew and began to turn the tide against the chaos. It was the ranching families who became the most influential and powerful in these days, with the foremost of those eventually being the Baileys. The Baileys, along with the families like the Webbers and Sounders, were able to secure significant stretches of land and work together to protect each other and the workers. The last patriarch of the Bailey clan, Preston, in particular, forged agreements between them all in service of mutual protection and enrichment. Preston Bailey had two daughters and a son with his wife. The daughters, Evelyn and Muriel, were soon married to various neighbors while the son became the object of the man's dotting love. He was named Augustus, and when they came of age, the young man was noted for his love of money. Ooh, better cash expenses. Replace economic know-how with love of money. Uh, oh, economic know-how. So you get Cap's income and Cap's expenses goes down. Balance energy. More political power. Better uh, max volunteers force. I like the political power, but it's not very much. And an eye for talent. Better army leader costs. Party popularity stability modifier. And daily command power game multiplier. Well, you know what? It seems like this guy is all about money. So we're going to go with that. And then blotting out the sun. Raiders and tribal squatters alike became rarities within the Iry over time, thanks to the Baron and Zack Company. The work of such brave men is truly never finished, however, and yet more tribes chose to encroach upon our lands. But well, let's talk about this guy. Who is he? Ruthless pragmatism is the name of the game for Baron Bailey, the self-styled tycoon who controls his land with an iron fist, presenting himself as a soft-spoken rural statesman. And his bowler hats and fine vests, it can become quite charming as long as it suits him. He can only be trusted in word or deed as far as it benefits him, however. There's little he won't stoop to in pursuit of wealth and power as long as his own neck isn't put on the line. With mercenaries, surprise attacks, deals with those even less reputable than himself, and a cruel cunning all having played their part in getting him this far, but like any man of his breed, it isn't enough to satisfy. Of course, the Baron's way, lose a recruitable population factor and appeal to refugees, but better captain come. The Baron's a cruel man, known for his ruthless efficiency. Much of the land of Wyoming's own is sure cropped out to unknown hopefuls, who are then trapped in the unfortunate hellish loop that is the Baron's Irie, you know, but Zach arrives. The, soon, the son soon succeeded the father, when Preston Bailey found himself killed at the hands of a raider clan known as the Ram Breakers. This death was not to be quickly forgotten by the new head of the Bailey family, and it led the new uh, patriarch to increasingly violent skirmishes against the various tribes and raiders that his lands encroached upon. In between battles and running the family's ranches, Augustus did find time in his life to marry Carolyn Saunders and start a family with her. After a brief year together, the two welcomed a child into the world and am. The birth of his daughter was a bright spot in an otherwise terrible time in Augustus's life, as shortly after he lost his wife to an outbreak of influenza that ripped through the Irie. Things began to look up when the newcomers arrived in the Irie and militia, exiled from their homes to the west by rivals in the mountains, was traveling aimlessly in search of a new home. 
a chance encounter between the leader of this com Zack Company, General Scott, and Augustus led to the two forging a new alliance that would change Iris fortune in the days to come. The two shared a hatred for raiders, tribals and other groups that threatened their vision of civilization. They would soon begin enacting plans to wipe out such peoples from the Irian, and the most important tools Zack Company brought to bear were their stock of explosives. Ooh. Well, let's see. The Barons Elite, more good division organization, division defense, just by world goes times, and worst cat's expenses. The mercs employed by the Baron are the best of the best. If it is ruthless, expansionist mantra, the bigger is better to a high degree. After many years of service, they become deathly loyal to him and will fight to the death for a slice of their pay. Supply of chems. Ooh, we get healing powder immediately, which is good. We need uh, healing powder. Um, crates and crates of ammunition. So right now, we are lacking a lot of guns. Do we have any money? We have a, no money. Honestly, I kind of like this. Supply of chems seem like a lot of fun. It makes sense to go with this. But we could use this immediately, but we have no army XP to use it on us. Um, because with this, 100 things of support equipment, which I would use almost immediately. Um, but we don't have to research less. And we only have three research slots, so that would be the best bet for us. And after that, so also we should know that we do need to go to war with the clans. Or, or cons, not clans. Wild folks like the cons aren't peaceful neighbors, my friends. See how they plant no seeds, raise no livestock? When they get hungry, they'll come knocking on our doors, looking to raid our lands, or larders, and drag off anything they can carry. I say we don't give them the chance. It's from Augustus Bailey. Uh, we're going to need way more guns, too, right now. Way more guns. Blotting out the sun, the years after Zack Company's arrival, many changes came to the Irie. A number of tribes and raider clans were wiped out, starting with the Ram Breakers. With those victories came an expansion of the ranches and families, and safer settlements for trade. Augustus ended up receiving the lion's share of the credit for these boons, and soon named himself the Baron of the Irie. The other families growls in private, but none of them could argue when the man controlled the largest militia and their own coffers wealth. Azara came of age, and he started a close friendship with a hunter named Ezekiel. Not long after, Augustus crowned himself. The first of the tax collectors began circulating through the land. While there were those who were less than pleased, their attentions were soon turned towards more foes, not only by the families, who wished to redirect any rancor from themselves, but also by the Church of St. Matthew that had aligned itself closely to the Bailey family over the years. There was always another group of raiders, a nomadic tribe that was a threat to the people in the land. The most recent target of this violence was a Sun Gazer tribe, who was roaming in the lands north of the Weber's clan's ranches. They stepped a little too close to the big horner herds and ignored one too many warnings, so they had to go. As that company and the rest of the Irish forces moved in, and without hesitation or mercy, the Sun Gazer tribe was wiped out. Once they were destroyed, their hunting grounds were handed over to the Weber clan. The Saunders family. Ooh, we could use those caps. Ooh, short term, we can use that money to buy guns, but improve relations, or we can just get an arms workshop and just build it ourselves. Um, how much does it cost to buy really garbage guns? It costs us 15, so you can get up to 10. 10 of these, and you get how many? 250. Two, two Ooh, that's good. Right now we make four a day, five a day. You know what? As much as I want to do the Saunders family, I still want to do this one, the Hartfords. So, we're going to go to war very soon. So we should be ready for that. Thinking about beans? I love beans. Oh, get a research slot. Ooh. Um, as much as I want a fourth research slot, because eventually you can get a fifth one down here too, I think. Um, somewhere here. Battle Big Horner. So if you want to know what that is, um, we're going to definitely need everything we have, or everything we're going to need to beat up the, the cons. <clears throat> But it doesn't seem like there's a lot here. I, I wouldn't mind racing for those workshops. More division attack is good. More entrenchment is good. Entrenchment speed, max planning factor. Uh, division defense of core territory. So, the fire is upon the hills. The frontier may be mostly peaceful, but times grow tough and some folks desperate. Change must be made. It helps with stability, too. Well, of course, now we're lacking some scrap, but I'm going to go ahead and start importing some because we need to make as many guns as humanly possible. The Bazaar. I think to, I used to think I was the strangest person in the world until a man dressed as a Zetan to sold me a hot dog with spice mayonnaise. At least I think it was a costume. Before the bombs fell, vault tech bought an underground mall in Billings, Montana. It's a tourist attraction. Uh, the novelty soon wore off, especially with the Great War rationing, but when the bombs fell, the mall found new life as a home for its wine herds. Finding little to wear beyond a large Halloween store's costumes and inhabitants became the monster's army and prospered, adopting a carnivalesque atmosphere today. The bazaar offers a giddy little throw at a reasonable price for the weary traveler, and a neutral trading ground for those traversing the Great North. Uh, better to use a solar panel than scrap one for parts. So we're working on this, we're working on our support equipment. We do have these divisions here, we have a lot of militias. Followers of the Apocalypse, they're allowed to come in, as long as they pay their fee. Honestly, I kind of like getting free, 
relatively free civvies. I don't like militia. Oh, this guy's going. Yeah, that's not bad. 16 combat width is decent. We do have some special forces and a 10 combat width, which. And they have fire teams. That's not bad. Commando. Ooh. Hey, you know what? Special forces supply grace? It's like made to be. Thomas Loring, it would be better if your name was Zach, but whatever. Um, yeah. So, we go to war with them soon. I don't know how strong they are. So, um, Galon? Um, Galon? Oh. Uh. Uh. They're going to dislike us eventually anyways, whatever. Um, so, we need divisions now, don't we? Oh, God. Uh. I'm going to poop you out real quick. Yeah, we really do need more divisions now, don't we? Oh, yeah. We don't even have enough to hold the entire line. I don't want to go to war with them. Please, no. Please, no. More war sport would be good. Um, army XP and arms workshops. Land doctrine and arms workshops. Well, hunting wild beasts. There were many horrible creatures that roamed the fields of Wyoming at night. Most of them tragic leftovers of Alton Burgess's carelessness in the times gone by. Hunting them would not make the land safer, but prove the fitness of our warriors. Factors for the fire. There is a fire in every working individual's heart. A passion for a craft that is untapped. Why not let them express themselves with productive means? Do we have a... Uh, you're not a trade note, are you? Oh, you are a trade note. Okay. So we do have that. Oopsie. I'd spend the political power there, but is there anything else we could use political power else for? Ooh. Ruthless air. Political power. Loose stability. Better just by world goals time. Greed is good. Oh, that's different too. What's the people without trade? Not much, dear. Caravan trader. Pretty normal. Looks like everything else here, for the most part, is pretty darn normal, so... And down here is St. Matthew's Torch. Pious Organizer. The Pious Sister. Scientific Development. The Serpent. At Friends in High Places. I do like that. Experienced Diplomat. Person of the Community. Not bad. Faithful Henchman. Okay. Honest Speaker. Um, conventional Warfare. Research Speed. More Daily Army XP. Research Speed. Honorless Officer. Huh. Asymmetrical Warfare. Research Speed. Interesting. Conventional 15%, and more research speed. So you get less army XP, and you get less conventional warfare research speed, but you get more research speed. That kind of makes up for it. Um, what is this thing over here? Uh, it's not over here. It's good. Uh, Mexican buffs, miscellaneous buffs, tribal buffs, uh, origins. I'm looking for the big horner. Schematics, units, field scribes, brother knights, law keepers, monsters, plants, and I can, super mutants, super mutants, ghouls, ghouls, cool. It'll be down here. Maple. Pathfinders, Shake the Numbers, Clan, Mountain Gods, Sun Gods, Nomads, Healthy Warriors, Nocturnal Warriors, God in the Cave, Lessons of the Outsiders, Guests of the Lands, Tribal War Paint, Merc Mercenaries, uh, California Buffs, Old World Armor, Legion Buffs, t -t 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 Horns of Morna, I of course, Centurions. I don't think it'll be here. Citizens. Uh, I apologize for this. Shock Troopers, no. 18 right, for mastering of all scouts. Yeah, I didn't think so. Oregon buffs. Oh, oh, so over here. Battle bighorners. So uh, worse training tones, but more uh, more soft attack and break through. Interesting. Um, is there anyone who can give us more defense or manpower immediately? Oh, uh, that's unique. General Scott. Reinforce rate and breakthrough. We're not to be will not be shamed again, if not if I have anything to say about it. Kevin Guards, Division Defense plus five percent, but more organization, seven and a half percent, spy master. More max planning. The wall. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. Infantry units organization. Plus 10% more infantry units defense. Huh. Oh, more defense and more entrenchment. War just seems to follow me around. Following Stoke and quiet in his wife's footsteps. Clarence has also come to the Iron in search of a new life. Where Sheila ingratiated herself to the neighbors quickly, her husband took considerably longer to warm up to them. It was a barons of Forster Ezekiel. Offer aiding, offering aid in hunting a rogue death cloud roving through the area, but eventually got close to the Tight-lipped tight -lipped man. Bonded through science and hunting, Clarence revealed to his new friend that he was an experienced soldier, a veteran of many battles on land to the east. He was stared at the warrior's lap, but he was easily one of the most experienced killers in the Iry. Ezekiel spoke to him of how Zack Company, and especially the rest of the Baron's men, lacked in discipline and organization, and Clarence had been convinced to aid in training them back up to snuff. There's a fire in every working individual's heart, a passion for a crowd that's untapped. Why not let them express themselves with a productive means? Yeah, why not? Uh, we need output. 
And I'm gonna grab this because we need that too. Uh, nine, oh god, nine days, that's not good. Um, you become a savage leader. Breakthrough would be pretty good too. Um, mm. I'm very worried about this. Very, 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 very worried. How much put apart? 1.1 a day? It's not much. Ohm's Law, that's good at least. Uh, let's go and save real quick because this could go very, very poorly, very, very easily for us. Uh, reference manuals, we get a little more decryption, which is good. Uh, okay, so we can see what they've got. They do have those. Oh god. Why do we want to go to war with them? I don't want to go to war with them. Why? Please hold out. Please don't die. You know, if I can, I'm going to go to Gentleman. That's our division template name. Gentleman. You know what? Since we're here, well, I'm going to throw this guy out anyways. More defense and whatnot. I mean, wait, no mention for that. Interesting. A conscientious objector. Two men sat silently in the Bailey estate study, nursing their beers and looking into the fire. On the left was the Baron himself. A thick scowl on his face as he considered what to say. On the right sat Ezekiel, the Baron's friend lieutenant. His expression stoic and inscrutable. When the silence became unbearable, Augustus stood up and tossed another log into the fireplace. Darn it, all Zeke. Uh, you know what kind of position you put me in? He turned away to look back into the flames before the other man could reply. And Ezekiel finished his beer before answering, his one eye burning a hole in the Baron's back. I reckon you put me in this position first, Gus, Augustus. Those concepts really get, get just them gazers all over again. Killing them is like shooting fawns. Why are we killing all these folks? The Baron looked down his pocket and watched idly before speaking. You know the answer to that. They're in the way. Now Augustus did turn to face his stern face friend. Squatting their tents down in perfectly good pastures, planning to rob us the second they run out of roach and stag meat. The god of savages no different from any other clan of raiding filth. Ezekiel shook his head sadly. It doesn't have to be that way. I've watched them. They seem reasonable enough. Enough, the Baron held up his hand. I can't have folks questioning me in public, undermining me, not even you, Zeke. Standing up and putting on his hat, Ezekiel looked into Augustus's face and simply said, Guess y'all are gonna have to lock me up then. And so he did. So that should help out with the defense, at least a little bit, right? Help out, boys and girls. Good guys, this is not good. This is really not good. Why did we go to war with them? Who authorized this? You cannot start losing here, please. We lost 8 versus 11. Reclamation Authority. Um, we have Special Forces, which is pretty good, so you're still going to be inspirational, but when we get there. Alright, so hey, we got more arms workshops, which is fantastic. I still want even more, but we're more wars. We have no war support, too. We're no offensive war. God dang it. Oh, God dang it. That's not good. And more planning and logistics. Well, then we might as well try to race for more arms workshops then. Outsmarting our betters. Many great forces surround the lands of Wyoming. What if one tries to breach our safety? We know the land better than anyone, and we won't just make use of it, we'll make it part of our advantage. How much money do we got? 73? Okay. Oh crap, they have no opinion of us. We need at least... Uh, can we sell anything? Do we the opinion of the gunrunners? Uh, probably not. 10,000. Well, you know what? Can we buy a basic melee weapon and stuff? No. Crap. Factories for the folks. A reasonable society has formed off a system of mutually agreed tasks. The way sends a harsh place, so many folks crave some sort of a purpose. To protect ourselves and to bind the minds of our people will facilitate the construction of new workshops across Wyoming. Yes, we will. Why? Why? You know what? We're gonna abandon there. You go here. You're abandoned there. You're gonna go there. You're gonna go there. We just can't. We can't deal with this. I don't understand. Like, why do we go to war? I get we got to take them out and whatnot. You do not do that. But there's literally nothing we can do. I'm gonna do this. Please go ahead. Maybe we just got unlucky at the beginning since uh, the opinion was lowered. Okay, this is impossible. Uh. This is not cool. What are we supposed to do about this? And that's a campaign. <laughs> Safe haven? Uh, why don't we get support? 
Well, it looks like I might just have to reload the game then and see if we can do anything different here. Why don't we get the, like the free fighters or something? I guess it's too early to get the free fighters on. Uh, War propaganda would be nice. Business. Oh, can you get a business favor? Outsmarting our betters. Can use more political power too. Is that war? It still has victory. Slash and burn. Division organization. Equipment capture ratio. More attack. Um, that wouldn't really help us out. I mean, you could capture more stuff, but it won't really help us out too much. Well, I guess hearts and minds. People ready to defend themselves will answer a thousand more calls of action. Planning a way ahead. Our wars have done much to protect our citizenry. Exalting them for their repeated victories would be appreciated, no? Get back in there. I know you want to cover that hole, but still. How do I improve relations? I think we got screwed over here. Help settlements? Honestly, I'd rather get some more, someone for military stuff. Uh, reinforce is not bad. I might even just go caravan guard for more defense. Division defense on core territory. Maybe the local sheriff? Oh! Another division. Thank God. Oh, help. What? What? Hello? Well then. Um, I'm going to double check a couple things here and there. Uh, yeah, that's not good. Homeland doctrines? We have no need for anything but home. Turning our mind in will bring about a true air of peace. Expansion doctrines? An outward way of life is the only way to ensure our own personal safety. We'll venture out and vanquish threats before they can reach our doorstep. Friendly but territorial. A cautious hand can be better than a welcoming one. At least, that's what most people think of trying after petting, trying to pet a mountain lion. And a trained populace. A gun in everyone's hand is one thing, but without the know-how to sling it, it's as useful as a bag of dirt in a drought. Training exercises just won't help folks what to do. It'll save a lot of lives in the process. All right, everyone. So, it's destined that the Baron's Iry gets taken out by both both the Northern Cons as well as the Martial Republic. But truth be told, I'm going to be very honest here. I had to use Cons commands to make sure the Martial Republic did not declare war on us, um, and so we can go to war. The you know finish in Northern Cons one by one, which were. You know, it's possible. It's, it's kind of there as long as we don't get declared war on by two two factions. But here we're at. Um, eight divisions here and two things of Zag companies. Casualty list. Five day divisions left. Uh, there they are. For some reason, they abandoned the line here on the left. So, regardless, I'll just be very transparent. You know, uh, I did use cons commands because it's just, you can't do this and beat the Marshall Republic up. And the Baron's Iris guess is just destined to lose. Um... <clears throat> Which sucks, so that's why we're trying to go in here as fast as we can as we see an open, uh, open uh, opening here in a level. So, okay, so we do have them now. So, which kind of sucks for them, but whatever. Um, we're destined to die, but you know what? They're destined to want to kill us, so I want to go back and kill them too. So, I apologize for using cons commands, but it is what it is. But, it is what it is, like I said. Uh, after that, we still have all these other two to do. Um, also, I did change it up a little bit. We did not go with, uh, what is it? The Baron's Elite, Upper Hand, which one? The Homeland Doctrine. Oh, we went with I for Talent, because that gives more political, a little more political power, more daily command power, which helps out too. Um, but it is what it is, so I guess a rallying cry? Wild folks like the Cons aren't peaceful neighbors. My friends, see how they plant no seeds, raise no livestock? When they get hungry, they'll come knocking on our doors, looking to raid our larders and drag off anything they can carry. I say we don't give them the chance, and we must all stand together on this, from Augustus Bailey. The Coalescence. Wyomans are home, and if we have anything to say about it, it always will be. A civilized victory. A tribe of raiders was never going to be able to match up against the spirit of honest, hard-working folks like ourselves. The cons are defeated, and the land stands ready for us to put it to work. Praise be to God, and to your barons. From Augustus Bailey. So now what do we got here? Okay, ooh, a lot of good things here. Dog technology oh, research speed. Research stuff. Ooh, that'd be pretty good too. Under a firm boot. I like that. With well, the cons put down, the next step for new pastures and farmlands to put them to work. Idle hands are the devil's playground, after all, and we have no need for more devils. Get more compliance, huh? You get free, basically free course, which is pretty nice. Some more construction speed, passive caps income, that's pretty decent overall. Um, manpower wasn't as big of an issue as I thought it would maybe be, but it's still not great for us. I still like to go to Willcooked Army, but we're going to go grab the Golden Gecko, because I love the Golden Gecko. 
Now, so we're going to do that one and sweep in up the mess. The war is over, but the work is not. There are, there are roads to clear, fences to mend, bridges to build, and fields to sow. The Webbers cannot do it all alone, so take up your spades. What was theirs is ours. The Khans weren't exactly wealthy, truth be told, but they are supposed to be divided up nonetheless. Guns, cams, land, and of course, the workers are all up for grabs, though the bulk of it will go to the Baileys and Hartfords, of course. They suffer the most from fighting, after all, and deserve compensation. Abs absolutely. If we have to give it to him, so be it. Very nice. Very, very nice. So, organizational relations. We don't have any map, but we've got plenty of guns, though, which we're pretty good with. Um, what else? The Wild Hounds. Uh, unexpected, but not unwelcome. Some of our people still vote. Are the rooms of... Ruins of a former kennel and dog training school in the northern reaches of the former Khan territories. There's dozens of hounds in the area, strong and fit, and Sheila's certainly they sure, certain that she can refine their breeding stock if we can recapture the pack. Average should begin immediately. What's a rancher without a faithful hound to keep them company after all? Uh, sweeping up the a chip. A scheme is being hatched in the Bailey estate, not for the first time. The by the Baron's beloved daughter. The feuds of Wyoming. Wyoming's a fat, vast and beautiful state, or land, full of opportunities for growth. We must take advantage of it so that our children may live easier. Infrastructure, uh, sure, why not? Provides tools thinking about beans. Wyoming's a peaceful place with plenty of room for homesteading. Of course, we gotta really work on some things, but that's everywhere. But it's so, but less so here. It's kind of nice sometimes here, you know, when everything things aren't blowing up all the time. We've got more industry to do, uh, but we need some anti tank. It's gonna be very, very important. So what are we missing here? Manpower? It's probably just manpower. Yeah, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of manpower. Why does Wyoming... Well, it's good for resources, don't get me wrong. Uh, great bargaining chip, sure. Just in case. Ooh, 2,000 manpower is pretty nice. Yeah, this stuff is all good. You know, not really needed yet. Except for this one down here. Where's where that, where that research lot is, so... I mentioned you'd be up reward the families. Versus restrain the families. Oh, interesting. Uh huh. Well, damage garrison goes down when you do like that a lot. <clears throat> and we went with Sheila Hartford there, too. Uh, Ruthless Heir. Well, we're going to need that peepee. -pee. Not going to lie. We're going to need that peepee. -pee. Aaron C. Well, the surroundings, it's easy to forget the beauty of nature. Even more so, if we forget to use a great big sky, many rivers to our advantage. Eventually, we'll do the grow boot grows heavier, too. It's not been an easy task to tame this land, but our expansion into the north has borne greater and greater fruit. The Khan's rebellious spirit has largely been crushed, and the herds grow fat and plentiful. This land is truly ours now. So what do we want in the end? Would we rather have Zack Company reforms or repaying a debt? The Hartfords of Peas. Daily Army speaking, that's pretty good. St. Matthew's do. Uh, patron saint of tax collectors. In God's house, and where the families versus this one. The Gentle Agency. Ooh. Velvet stretched over iron. And Zack Company reforms. More organization recovery rate. Weber workshops. Well, and to get more special force capacity multiplier in, in minimum. Conventional warfare, recruitable population factor, appeal to refugees, free up some hands. The Iris Airy Air Stuff unlocks Mural Bailey Weber's and advisor, the Bailey Woman. Huh. Oh, get that, because we'll need that to fight out the Martial Republic. Oh, gosh, God, this is uh, military center bonuses, you know what, that'd be worth it. We don't have a ton of money, but we still got 55. Um, because eventually, can we get a research slot somewhere around here? Which one do we want? Tax collectors, reward the families, restrain the families. Augustus Bailey versus Annette Bailey. Well, Augustus ain't doing too bad for us, but is he great? He's not superb. Eventually, anarchy knows no reigns. But you get better compliance and res less resistance, I got to know some areas. And fill the coffers at barren country. So we want more money. And better core creation costs, which is important. Versus playing the fools with Annette Bailey. Still get the same things basically there. This one gives you more stability. This gives you more war sport. Versus the search of a, ba a back to stab. Barren is country. Better division or uh, speed. Just so our workload stuff goes way down. And opera stuff. This one's more aggressive. Do we want to be more aggressive? Or do we want to make more money? Or and cores. Ooh. That's a good one. That's a really good one to ask. A ship first, though. Uh, what do we not have here? Sport equipment, which we will need. Go three there. Nice. 
Anything else here? He Siege of Hidden Valley. Uh, we might go Nanette Bailey. When the world is this dark, can you really go wrong stabbing in the shadows? For every child that rejects a parent's way of life, another is a chip off the pr proverbial block. And that is so and such a daughter taking after her father in most things. This is a point both of pride and cause for con constant concern as far as the parent is concerned. She is as grasping, conniving, ambitious, and self centered as he is, and that makes her quite dangerous to keep around as one's lieutenant. He suspects that more than once she has tried to kill him, and aside from that, from her verbal barbs and criticisms, are sharp enough to cut. But even Augustus has a soft spot for his daughter and willing to do more than scold and occasionally place her under house arrest. Her talents are also considerable, and she's an expert in glad handling and convincing others to do as the Bailey's wishes. Better have her out of sipping tea and shaking, hands and stewing and plotting uh, at home after all. Off oh, the old block, the Baron's daughter, and yeah, takes after her father in many different ways. Uh, give me a second here. Uh, she is ambitious, ruthless, and grasping and selfish. Uh, with a mind full of plans and schemes, whispers around the estate claim that extends even to her own family, with many suspecting that the parodical daughter has attempted to kill her father more than once. For his own part, Augustus dots upon his daughter, and while he's aware of her ambitious nature, mostly as a source of pride for the man. Not that he hasn't had to chastise her a time or two for overreach, now and now, as in spending several nights away from the estate, not coming home until the sunrise or even until the following evening. Augustus was away hunting during the first of these nights, but now he's home and a few of his servants have warned him that she looks uh, to be up to something. Even one of the Baron's firearms has disappeared from its safe. And then, merely asking her father to trust her when questioned about these events, though she did remark offhandedly about missing Ezekiel, shall Augustus place his faith in his heir, or send her to work on diplomatic missions far from home where she can still be of use? But hard pressed to work any mischief. Send her away. Trust her. Hmm. Oh, ruthless heir. Do we want to be aggressive with my money? Honestly? I don't know the next time I'm going to play at Baron's Iry, because this is extraordinarily tough. So. I feel like we're going to go to war anyways, and we're going to be aggressive. So, we're going to trust her. We can trust her daughter, right? Oh. For the Wild Hounds! Oh, yeah, we're going to do... No, no, train Populous! Yeah, train Populous next, yeah. yeah. Absolutely, yeah. One day, go. Cool. Yeah. A jailbreak! Annette smirked from the shadows in which she'd waited for the, uh, during the whole affair. The Baron. Her father was dead. Her message to him had been simple. Come to the jail, so the plot I've uncovered. When he'd arrived, he found himself running straight into Ezekiel, newly freed from his cell. She slipped a key to the imprisoned man and one of her letters to him, along with something else. Her father had sounded so shocked when Ezekiel had drawn a gun. One stolen from the Bailey's estate a new, few nights before and shot him in response to him brandishing his own weapon. Ezekiel had always been one of the best shots in the eye arena, and Annette had been counting on him not losing his touch in prison. She stepped out silently and so said to Ezekiel's back as he stood over the body of his former friend, Well done, love. He wrote about a gun raised before realizing who'd spoken. His shoulders slumped then, and in a low voice it said, Don't call me that, Annie, not now. He looked back at the body again before asking, This is what y'all actually wanted, isn't it? Annette walked to him and gave him a kiss on the cheek. I want a lot of things, Zeke. Tonight I got two of them. Her voice took on an almost sad note, Then I'll give you something now, though. A head start. Ezekiel understood the threat in her words and knew she had, she, that she'd have to put a bounty on his head for this. He frowned once more, turning towards the door and ran off into the night. She heard him call out over, over her shoulder. They ain't made a viper with fangs sharper than you, Annie. And he was gone. So we lose our big old daddy here. An eye for talent. Uh, actually, you know what? Army leader cost goes minus 50%. You know what? We still have him. Oh, I don't want this one. Uh, that's not great. Just a couple guys. See what we got here. Cool. So she, lo we lose stability. Better just fight Rogal's times. And offensive war stability modifier. Wow, that actually destroyed her stability. Oh, look at her. Oh, my God. The Baron is dead. Long live the Baroness. After waiting for far too long. And that is finally what she wanted. Full control. She has the only minor plans to change the day-to-day -day business of the Iry. The most important change has already taken place after all. Tempting as it is, Annette simply cannot rest on her laurels and enjoy the sounds of taxes coming in through. There are threats and challenges and above all opportunities in all directions and she'll need to keep playing the game wisely to stay on top. Her guests for subterfuge, ruthless nature, and silver tongue will continue to serve her well. We don't want to mess with her. But that's alright. What can we choose here that'll benefit us immediately? Outside of auxiliaries, more daily compliance, I guess. There's our stability a little bit, but we're straining the families. 
Don't trouble yourselves, neighbors. Business will continue as much as it did under my beloved father. We'll all grow quite wealthy and bring this land to heal. A reminder to you all, however, I know everything that happens in the Irie. Especially the things that no one's supposed to know. Have a good evening. From Annette Bailey. The Gentle Agency. The father lacked subtlety and eventually proved to be his downfall. <clears throat> I don't intend to follow in such clumsy footsteps. That's why you're here. The first like-minded employees of a new bureau that will ensure the safety and prosperity of the Irie and the Baileys. The world will keep no secrets from you. From Annette Bailey. Absolutely. Go to signals, eh? Nice. Uh, one more map part, sure. Oh, no. Actually, with this much stability, can do that? Yes, please. Zack Company reforms. Gentlemen and gentlewomen, without your efforts, the Irie would still be a lawless country, and yet it was my father who claimed the lion's share of the credit. It's time for that to change. A time for a new Zack Company, one that will be recognized as heroes in the personal head of a baroness. Oh, the personal hand of a baroness. A toast to you from Annette Bailey. And not in my backyard. Far Sons and Highlands. Watch. I kind of like that. I, kinda, I do kind of want to go to war. Uh, what do we got here? Arms workshop stability. I like this. That's good too. Um, not in my backyard. The lands of the south have dissolved into complete chaos in recent times. Monsters and ruffians at every turn and innocent ranchers and sellers caught in between. It's our responsibility to store order and civilization whether they wish it or not. Weber workshops. Old Cornelius offered to buy out some of my smaller ranches to expand his workshops into. As long as he keeps his workers out of my sight, I suppose it's for the best. We always need more weapons and equipment after all. Iris of the Water. I met with Iris for coffee and cakes today, all things she brought from a long distance trade voyage. The coffee is highly spicy, but very good. During a conversation, Iris brought up just how few boats we have at her disposal and how simple most of them are. It's inspired me to put a greater investment into the fleet to keep its pirates away from her shores and nothing else. And encourage Grady's promotion or Grady's promotion. Zack Company shaped up significantly in recent days. Watching them drills become quite the pleasant pastime on lazy days. They're missing something though, an underhanded edge, something that makes proper use of our intelligence subtlety. I've spoken with Grady several times and he agrees. I should encourage Scott to give him wider authority from Annette Bailey. Bigger iron, skill, training, teamwork. All these matter in war, but sometimes what you really need is a shiny new gun. Uh, more water? Oh, it's steel. I'll escape from hardship. Many people stayed in Wyoming by accident. Maybe the caravan f fell apart, maybe they just like the people, or maybe it was just the weather. These people are quick to chat up the newcomers and work with the locals. The waters of Wyoming. Though they are far from safe to drink in such times, the lakes and rivers of Wyoming are far better than others found in the wasteland. With just enough jury rigging, we can establish a set of purifiers to help us with thirst, but I think we'll end it there. We had a pretty successful ep first episode, even though we had to... Uh, I jerry rig a few things, but regardless, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow uh, in the next episode. And as a reminder, the uh, update for everybody releases on February 28th, 2024. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.